Welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris is gearing up for her first interview on Fox News with Chief Political Anchor Brett Baer. Just three weeks before Election Day, the exclusive sit-down will take place in Pennsylvania, a crucial swing state, the crucial swing state, where polls show a razor-thin race between Harris and former President Donald Trump. With no preconditions and no topics off the table, Bayer promises a candid conversation that will air unedited except for minimal timing adjustments. This comes after her 60 Minutes interview was widely criticized for being edited in a favorable way towards the vice president. Here's what Bayer had to say about the upcoming interview. I thought Bill Whitaker did a good job asking matter-of-fact questions and following up. I think the controversy over the edit was a big, big deal uh, for CBS. I can't figure out why they would put a, in a completely different answer that wasn't even included in the first clip that they put out. Yeah, uh, and that was the issue. I mean, one clip went out and then the other one out, and obviously which, which you saw that. Which was completely not different. Slightly different. It was completely different. Exactly. Was crazy. So that's not going to happen with us. Um, <laughs> it's going to be uh, just before my show. I'll do my show live in Pennsylvania. Um, it'll be essentially live to tape. Uh, and no stipulations on the questions, uh, wide open, there's no caveats that are coming to do the interview, mm -hmm. um, so she'll take uh, all and any questions. In case you missed the now infamous 60 Minutes clips that were released with different edits, here's a refresh. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. Well, Bill, the work that we have done has resulted in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. We are not going to stop pursuing what is necessary for the United States to be clear about where we stand on the need for this war to end. I actually think both the edited clip and the unedited clip were pretty bad <laughs> for uh, Kamala Harris because she gives no answers. She is very vulnerable on this because on one hand she wants to be critical of Netanyahu and I guess how her as part of this, the Biden administration has handled this and she's but she's not committed to doing anything differently which is unsatisfying for progressives. She has no explanation for what the policy is and what the policy actually is is just I think we support Israel and we support Netanyahu and we're going to continue supporting them no matter what your feelings as a progressive might be about it. But you can't say that, so you get this total non-answer. Um, I, I don't know why they tried to make it seem better in the edited version. It was still pretty bad. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if the edited version still doesn't look great, then that shows you the bottom of the barrel dregs that they were really working with when it came to the full interview, which they say it was edited for time, but you would think you would have taken a smaller snippet of the answer that was first presented as opposed to splicing in a completely mm -hmm. different answer, which is why obviously people were so upset about this. People understand that interviews sometimes need to be condensed, but to swap out answers is really beyond the normal journalistic practice for that kind of scenario. You could tell when the media had turned on Biden that they were no longer editing out his stammers or his ums, his confusion in transcripts of their discussions with him. That's when you knew they wanted the world to see uh, that he is not fit for this and to turn on him. Uh, the way they had. Um, look, I will give Kamala Harris credit for doing this interview with Fox News. I think it is smart of her and correct. I mean, sort of philosophically correct to do interviews that are going to be more adversarial and probably good for her campaign as well. She was too, I would argue early on, too reliant on the mainstream media to just manifest positive vibes on her behalf, disconnected to her participation in that movement, just hoping that was going to work out. And since then, she's done some interesting things like the Call Her Daddy podcast, and she's going to be on or trying to be on Joe Rogan, I think, um, some other things. Things. It's a reflection of the fact that people get their news from, you know, not just traditional media or corporate media, but all sorts of different places. Not all of those were, were confrontational, but I think it's smart to do more of that. I think the problem with her is that no campaign strategy can make up for a bad candidate. So she's between a rock and a hard place because the voters say that they want to know more about her. But then the more media she does, the more criticism she gets, and it seems like the Not less like people this. like her, right? <laughs> so I, I think that her 
her campaign probably should have put her out sooner, but they were rightfully trying to protect her from the fact that she's not very agile in interviews. She's not very good at speaking off the cuff. She's pretty much only good at reading scripted answers, which when you have a decent interviewer who's actually going to challenge you on your word salads is not going to end well. So. Although I think it's philosophically correct was the phrase you used to do the Fox News interview to try to go on Joe Rogan, strategically, I'm not sure it's a great idea. And in fact, if she's going to go on Fox News, she probably would be better off going up with someone who is more partisan than Brett Bayer, because then she always has the excuse that they were biased towards her, that the questions were unfair, that they were just out to get her. It was a gotcha interview. But Brett Bayer is like a pretty down the middle kind of guy. He's, yeah. go he's not going to uh, editorialize his questions. He's going to be very straightforward. And she's going to come off, I think, probably looking very much worse for wear. Well, and that was kind of true of the 60 Minutes interview. You know, set aside the editing concerns, the the hosting, the 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 question asking was pretty fine. I thought they, they got her on a couple things, and yeah, she just didn't have really compelling answers. I, this was what Tim Walls was supposed to be helping her with, right? That he was going to be an effective surrogate. He was better with the media. He has more personality and feistiness. I don't think that has panned out whatsoever. Um, he has not done, he's not done a lot of interviews and he's had to face a lot of uh, questions about his exaggerations and his record when he does do them. I think he comes off not folksy, cranky, I would say. But, you know, I, I, maybe I'm biased. I really don't like his policies, so I don't know how someone who's more neutral or less decided on him perceives him. But put together, I don't know that it's a, it's not a media-friendly ticket. Right. I mean, they, they went with this idea that he was media-friendly because he had this one viral moment where he called J.D. Vance weird, and the Democrats were able to take that and run with it. But then the vetting process, actually, for Tim Walls was very truncated, and apparently they didn't think that all of these inconsistencies with his record were going to matter. And then when he's asked about them, he says, oh, I'm a knucklehead, or yeah. I misspeak all the time, or I have bad grammar. Well, they only have like five seconds to find a vice presidential candidate, because this entire no, ticket fair. got put together it's at the literal last minute. It's not entirely their fault, but I will say that uh, typical opposition research and vulnerability studies would have turned up all yeah. of this stuff. I think they just didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. But his inability to explain it or answer for it has proven to be the bigger problem. And calling yourself a knucklehead when you're running for the number two most powerful position in the world, I don't think is something that really resonates with voters. Well, J.D. Vance has been doing a number of media interviews as well. We'll talk about his latest forays there, what he's discussing a little bit later on. More free media in just a minute.